enough the gbv conversation assalamu alaikum and hello violence against women is one of the most prevalent human rights violations in the world it knows no social economic or national boundaries and no one is immune to it our series will delve into the sensitive and yes uncomfortable reality and magnitude of gender based violence our brave survivors will share their experiences and give you the viewer and listener first hand account of how absolutely real gbv is we encourage you to participate so that we can work on solutions together we welcome you to the first episode of enough the gbv conversation today i am joined in studio by two amazing women i am joined by our resident legal and shelter services expert advocate bernadine bacher welcome bernadine thank you very much thank you for having me it's very exciting to be here I'm just going to give a little short little introduction to Bernadine. Bernadine is the director of the Sadki Batman Center for Women and Children and the chairperson of the Western Cape Women's Shelter Movement amongst others. She has been active in protecting the human rights of women and children since she started her career in law. A warm welcome to you Bernadine once again. Also Caroline Peters our special invited guest. For those of you who don't know Caroline, she's a feminist, a human rights activist who has worked in the gender rights field for almost 30 years and Caroline is very well known to all of us on Facebook as well. <laughs> Caroline has bravely transcended her past after being gang raped, stabbed and seeing her best friend murdered at the age of 16 in Nantes Park in Cape Town. Caroline is actively involved in various groups that advocates for women's rights. She holds various positions in different NPOs and is currently the director and founder of the Kalas Foundation and the coordinator of the Cape Flats Women's Movement. Once again, welcome ladies. I am immensely proud to be in your company. Caroline, I'm going to get right into it with you. In your opinion, why is it important to bring awareness to GBV with programs such as this. Thank you, Mushrika, and good evening, listeners and everyone watching, and assalamu alaikum, and thank you for having me once again at Radio 786. For me, if we look at the gender-linked study of 2019 regarding GBV and the media, okay, only of the media coverage, and thank you to Uh, Radio 786 for hosting this Sarki Batman and IMA. I think it's a conversation like you said at the introduction it's very uncomfortable to have this conversation. We like to have the feel good shows and everybody feel warm and fuzzy but if we do not start having these conversations in on them in media on these different platforms we we're not going to win so i always say gender based violence will only be dismantled if it's a whole society collectively is we if we as society on all levels different platform stand together i believe that we can reduce gender based violence If we look at the study of gender links in 2019, only in the media, and, and, and it's a year ago, Mushvika, so not much could have changed in that time. In the media, only 6% of coverage of media is GBV matters, related matters, if compared to sports, entertainment and that. And, and that, that to me is, it's shocking because it if you is. look at the prevalence of GBV, if you look at how it permeates throughout our entire society in everything that we do, that only 6% of media mm-hmm. coverage mm-hmm. is given to GBV, it makes no sense. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the other things that stood out for me on that report was that only 16% of that will, will give you information of what to do and where to go. So programs like these, you, you know, so your reach or, or your reaches to the Muslim Islamic community. And for me, if we start having these conversations, like I said, on Islamic platforms, Christians, clergy start doing it, teachers starts mm-hmm. doing it, you know, so collectively 
we have a responsibility to dismantle and fight gender-based mm-hmm. violence. And we also have a responsibility to make the information accessible. Yes, right. Information yes. needs to be accessible mm-hmm. to those who need it. For mm-hmm. for us to be constantly um, speaking to the converted, mm-hmm. for us to be mm-hmm. constantly speaking mm-hmm. in our circles mm-hmm. is not doing anyone mm-hmm. any good. So like you say, um, thank you to all um, the media who do mm-hmm. um, shine the spotlight yes. on GBV. And it's also, it's, it, it, what we're also doing is taking away that isolation mm. that GBV yes. actually yes. puts onto to the yes. survivor. And it's shining a spotlight mm. on it. It's taking away the sense of shame yes. that a survivor suffers from. It's mm. saying, this is a problem. It's mm. all of our problem, mm. right? Mm. We all yes. have a responsibility to come up with a solution mm. for this. Um, and it's giving the survivor tools as well as, yes. as people that support her, tools yes. to actually be assisting her to, to get out of it. So mm. really important that we have these conversations mm. on an ongoing basis mm. that it's not just 16 days mm. that we deal with it or on women's um, yes. during women's, women's month. month. Yeah. Absolutely. Benedine, um, some stats show that in South Africa for the period 2019-2020, on average, eight women and three children are murdered every single day. Yeah. Let me say that again. On average, in South Africa, eight women and three children are murdered every every single day and SAPS has recorded 116 rapes per day yet we know that countless more go unreported but to me that's just the tip of the iceberg Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. I would like to hear from you mm-hmm. just how bad do you think the situation is in South Africa? Um, the situation is obviously horrific. Um, and as you say, it is the tip of the iceberg. Mm. That the, the numbers that we're getting, women don't report it because of the shame and the isolation of mm. of um, G- being subjected to GBV. It's also a... Um, a matter of sometimes women don't trust the the police services to actually assist them. So what we are looking at and what the um, SAPS comes out with as the statistics Mm. is a fraction of what's Mm. actually happening out there. If you look at what stats are saying, is 35% of our children are saying that they're being sexually abused while at child going, at school going Mm. age. Mm. That um, I would say it's more than that. Mm. Um, 119 women being raped every single day. Um, It's, it's, you know, how does one get your head around Mm. these, these type of statistics? One in every four women being subjected to physical violence. Um, I, with the three of us sitting around this table, yeah, add another woman, it's, it's somebody in the room. Yes. It's, you know, it's just to look at it that, like that um, and just to come up with solutions of how to deal with it. The statistically, um, there was a study that was done that said that the government spends between 21 and 42 billion rand a year on addressing gender-based violence. And that's with court services, police services, medical assistance, you know, it just, the, the, the the impact on society, even on that level, is vast. And you've just made a very good point. Put another woman in the room and somebody here mm-hmm. has been affected mm-hmm. by GBV. Mm-hmm. And I think that is something that I'd really like to get out there when you are sitting with your friends, mm-hmm. when you are sitting with your family, when you are sitting with a group of women. Count the woman. Mm-hmm. Count the woman and know. And know that one in four women are subjected to gender-based violence. Bernadine... Sorry, can, can I just mm-hmm. add, Mushvika? One in four women, but for the Western Cape, one in three women, mm-hmm. because of our DOP system, mm-hmm. that still exists. Yes. So if you look at if you look at us here in the Western Cape, I mean, the, the Western Cape to me is such a progressive mm-hmm. province and, and we've got lots of things in place. However, for the Western Cape, I mean, one in four is our national figure, but for the Western Cape, that figure is one in three still because of our DOP Mm -hmm. system that exists in the rural areas. You know, one in nine women, I mean, if you look at reported cases, you can times that by nine. Mm -hmm. So that's the figure of of women that is is, um, raped daily in South Africa. 23 seconds, 26 yes, seconds, 26 seconds, 26 every seconds, again, every 26. again, we need to be cognizant of that. We mm. need to know that as women, we need to be the support system yes. for other women. We need to make women aware mm. that they have safe spaces mm. with us. We mm. need to be using platforms like mm. this to make other women out there aware that they are not alone. Mm. Bernadine, why do we have such high rates? What are the drivers 
of GBV in South Africa? Well, we have five times the global rates of gender-based mm. violence, and, the, and there's very many. It's a very complex reason for that. So we have the traditional drivers of GBV, which, as Caroline said, um, would be your substance abuse mm. um, issues, which are very high within the mm. Western Cape, mm. but in South African society as a whole. Um, we are very much inured to to violence. We are um, we have high levels of gangsterism in South Africa, high levels of poverty, high levels of unemployment. These all feed into our high GBV rates. But also in South Africa, we are uniquely placed. We are living in the aftermath of the apartheid era, which um, spoke to um, control of, 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 of as uh, of, of of people. We are also living in the aftermath of um, a, a very much a part patriarchal society yes. so we still we still much very much embedded within that our gender gap across all aspects of a woman's life mm. is very very wide so we have very unique factors that feed into to GBV within South African society but the traditional drivers that I've mentioned like unemployment like poverty mm. like substance abuse are also there mm. Yeah. Listeners, we'd like you to know that if you, just a reminder that you can send us your questions and comment via our WhatsApp line on 786 10 11 12. 786 10 11 12. Uh, when we get back, we'll actually address some of the WhatsApp questions and comments that have come through. But we are now going to take a break and we'll be back shortly. Enough. The GBV Conversation. Welcome back to Enough. The GBV Conversation, proudly brought to you by the Islamic Medical Association and the Sarki Bartman Center, supported by Radio 786. Just a reminder that you can send us your questions and your comments via WhatsApp on 786 10 11 12. Um, during the break, we've just had a WhatsApp that came in. I'm going to read it to you. It says, Good day. GBV is predominantly aimed at women and discriminates against men and boys. 24,000 male rapes in South African prisons a month. Women killing their husbands and children. 40 men are being killed and 8 women every day. More men commit suicide than women, which begs the question, why the discrimination against men? Um, could I also just make the point um, that none of the statistics that come through um, in the comments um can right now be verified um, and just from my perspective I don't know what the ladies are going to say on it I need just to make uh, make the point that it is called the GBV conversation yes. gender-based violence conversation I doubt that we've ever mentioned that it is a female based violence conversation mm -hmm. uh, so just to be yes. clear um, yeah. I'm here to yes. speak about violence yes. against Genders. Genders. Yes. So um, that to me would include mm. um, the males. Yeah. Um, but ladies, let's let's continue. Um, mm. We will um, to the listener who sent in this WhatsApp. Um, thank you. We appreciate it, and we appreciate mm. um, you taking the time out to be part of this conversation. Mm. We need people to be mm. part of this conversation. We need people to hear us. We need people so that we can find solutions mm. to this problem. Um, but it's something that we will be tackling in further episodes as we go along. For now, Caroline. I need to ask, you are a gender activist of many years standing. Mm. What caused you to become involved in the gender-based violence uh, program and cause? Thank you, Ms. Fika. You know, when I, when I joined this sector in the late 80s, I became, well, not 80s, um, early 90s not 80s 1990 no mid 90s but anyway so at the age of 16 i was gang raped and a friend murdered at nantes park and at that time i i was suicidal i wanted to die i lost um my, my zest for life and then of course I didn't know that that was going to set the trajectory of my life. Looking back now, I mean, if, if you were to tell me at that stage that I was going to become an activist for sexual violence and domestic violence, it, it not, didn't look like that at all. And then as life continued, 
lot, a long journey from, and I always say to women as a rape survivors, we do not speak about the things that happen afterwards. When I went through my journey of substance abuse, of promiscuity, because we, 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 we do not want to say that. So Caroline didn't just happen, um, the, the activists. I think it was because of the lack of support that I felt at that age, only once I got to rape crisis many years later, did I realize that the journey that I was on could have been avoided, the self-destructive journey that happened to me after the rape. It could have been not avoided, but had they been, I mean, earlier you spoke about sisterhood. How do we hold safe spaces for another woman? So how do I now hold safe spaces for the 16 year old? So the 16-year-old me at the time had no support. I had no sisterhood, safe spaces. And I think, so for me, it was very... Um, so when I started as a volunteer... That yeah. was your... Th that's what pushed you. That's what yes. drove you. So yes. that you could be there. Yes. Um, unlike when there was nobody there for you. Mm. Yes, definitely. Bernadine, have you found that? Have you found that there is a sense of isolation um, that um, victims and survivors find themselves in? Absolutely. Um, the, the very nature of, of abuse is is that you're controlled and you're isolated. That's how a perpetrator operates to make sure that he can control you. I mean, just to give you an anecdotal um, example, we a couple of years ago on Madiba Day. Now, Madiba Day at the Saki Bartman Centre is one of the best days of my life. Mm. I, I, I love them. We have everybody from government organisations mm. to academics to um, little businesses coming in and spoiling the survivors and everything from motivational talks to teas and, I don't know, pedicures and, ha and manicures. And it's usually from the moment they wake up until they go to sleep, there's something on the go and loads and loads of gifts. And I was walking out on my way home out of the canteen where we'd just handed over some gifts to the ladies and one of the newer um, survivors that was staying in the shelter was standing in front of me and as I walked past her I noticed she looked really really sad and I in my mind I was going you know I wonder what happened because we've just had this very empowering day and I said to her are you okay can I help you and she said to me and the tears started rolling down her face and she said to me I said what's wrong she said to me burn today was the first day that I realized that there are people out there that actually care about us mm. and that broke my heart is that that's what the abuse does it isolates you it others you it puts you in a place away from other people um so yes yes and i often find that we trivialize that mm. those of us who are not in that situation mm. we trivialize it and um but they know that we're there for them mm. you know um why why don't they just leave mm. Mm. that is something that often comes up in every conversation yes. that I have is why don't they just leave? Very Ladies, could I ask you mm. first Caroline and then yes. Bernadine what is your take on that? What is your take on those people that say but why don't they just leave? If like Bernie said earlier, one of the things Bernie said that or Bernadine, sorry, Ber no, call me Bernie. Bernie, yeah, Bernie is call my Bernie. colleague and, and yeah. So so as as Bernie said earlier, you know, one of the things is that she lives in isolation. Imagine someone telling you daily how stupid you are, how worthless you are. Eventually you believe that you have no more self confidence, you have nothing left. The perpetrator makes you feel like nobody wants you, your family you see because he's isolated you from family and friends he becomes the savior he becomes that person that that you almost and then of course women stay so women would go to the church church says to women you know you must be submissive mm -hmm. to your husbands so we've been trained like that our mothers have said to us when your husband walks in from home make sure the tea is ready you know those little things how we socialize patriarchy comes in so women stay because of various reasons economics so i got married and you said to me don't bother 
bothered to work. But that's another way of controlling me because I'm not financially independent. So economical reasons, religion. We want to keep our family together. We don't want broken families, you know, and because also, it look like I failed. And also not that. We still have so much guilt and yes. shame yes. associated with failed marriages. Yes. Yet there is a double standard mm. when it comes to men and women mm -hmm. where failed marriages are mm. concerned. A female divorcee mm. is somehow seen as having less value mm. than mm. the male from whom mm. she is mm. divorced. Absolutely. Mm. I always say just watch at functions. After you get divorced, you're no longer invited to functions. Mm. You know, as those are just as mm. a woman. You know, but your ex husband you'll still see him on Facebook on the pictures mm. with the friends. Mm. But the friends do not invite you. You know, so so those things and one of the biggest things for me is the hope for change. Mushvika, you must remember when we date the men are so nice. Mm. So one of the biggest reasons why women stay as well is the hope for change. Yes. So you change. look at this mm. man, he will change. He will maybe change. if I pray harder, mm. maybe if I make more salah, maybe if I do, you know. Maybe if I love him more. If I love him more, mm. if I cook better, mm. if this, because eventually. If I did something yeah. else, oh, if yes, I yes. did something better, mm. yes. he will change. Yes. yes. Yeah. Bernie? And, and I mean, leaving is a process. Research mm. shows that yes. women leaves leaves seven times before she really leaves mm. for good. Mm. You know, a woman that, I always say that a woman that gets to Saki Bartman's mm. gates mm. has found the courage to actually yes. take that last step. Mm. She's at the end, right? Mm. This is the last hope mm. she's got mm. to actually get herself out of a very bad situation. Mm. So I always say, to, you know, the courage that it takes to get yes. there is immense. Mm. So Survivors don't traditionally ask for help. Mm. That's why I, I say to women, if you say to a survivor, can I help? And she says, no, make sure you ask her again mm. tomorrow. Yes. Because tomorrow it might be a different mm. story. Yeah. So yeah, it's a process and, and we need to understand a person that has been obliterated, that has lost all sense of self, mm. she's not going to immediately go, oh, I'm getting out of mm. this. She is going to think that this is what I deserve. Mm. Because that is what she has been, been programmed told. to mm. believe yeah. mm. by her abuser. And exactly. I think that is something that we also need uh, to be cognizant of is that this is conscious programming. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. it is yes. conscious programming. It by almost follows a script. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, Bernadine, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing us in tackling GBV in South Africa? Very big question. <laughs> do um, we have enough time? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I think that we all, what we need, as 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 um, Cyril Ramaphosa has said, we have need an all society solution mm. to GBV. Mm. Um, we need, obviously, we need to do the, the obvious things like strengthening our criminal justice system, making sure that we fund our shelters and our other NGOs and NPOs that, that deal with um, with. Uh, 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 GBV um, but we know what we need to do is all of us need to stand together mm. we need to call it out when we see mm. it you know if you're standing mm. in a room and there's a micro mm. aggression that is perpetrated yes. against a woman call it out mm. then and there mm. um, and understand that we are we are in a society that has made it it's up to all of us to actually mm. to dismantle it as it stands um, economic empowerment of women is vitally really? important if we're going to start addressing GBV we need to make sure that she's got the wherewithal to actually support mm. herself and her children so she doesn't feel that she has to stay with the perpetrator we need to make sure that women have jobs as mm. well so government needs to come to the party and actually say mm. that x amount of jobs have to go to women so that we can start economically empowering mm. them as well but we we have to look at society at broadly there mm. are so many different mm. ways that we need to get involved in this conversation we need to educate our boys and mm. our girl children yes. um so yes. uh, from from birth all the mm. way up there's so many different avenues that we can actually mm. use to actually address GBV mm. and a lot of it's in our national strategic plan. Mm. Mm. Caroline? Yes, I just want to add uh, uh, just how are we going to dismantle this GBV? One of the things is that just this morning we had a conversation about a billboard that is up at in one city. A huge billboard. We are so close to the 16 days of activism for no violence against women and children. There's a huge billboard displayed just right when the, when the program started, you spoke about reverse income. So the focus is on Oscar Pistorius, a fallen hero in sport. So there's a sports documentary that is being launched now. How insensitive of media or whoever 
that would it's not insensitive of media it's insensitive from the inception yes mm. it's yes. from the thought mm. process yes. mm. from the thought process to the person who, okay, who then that's... decided mm. that it's okay to mm. put that up there why yes. because Riva is just another woman just in the no. millions yes. of women yes. in South Africa yeah yep. who why has did suffered and once did not use that space to speak about GBV yes. We mm-hmm. we're a few days away from the 16 days launching the 16 days of activism. So now we've got this huge billboard of of Oscar Pistorius. Why do we not use these spaces to speak about GBV? Again, it's about patriarchy and who owns media houses? Men. Mm-hmm. We are going to take an ad break, but once uh, we get back, we are going to continue this very, very important conversation. South Africa, we have no excuse. We must work together to find a problem, to find a solution to the problem of gender-based violence. Enough. The GBV Conversation. Welcome back to Enough, the GBV conversation, proudly brought to you by the Islamic Medical Association and the Sadki Bartman Center, supported by Radio 786. Ladies, let's continue this conversation and let's get right back into it because we don't have a lot of time, but we've got a lot of things we need to be speaking about. Caroline, what can our viewers and our listeners do to address GBV in our own communities, in their communities? What can people do? we need to be intentional huh yes it cannot be a by the way education mm. around gbv we need to be intentional about it hold spaces in first first start with your home mm. first start in your home on a sunday afternoon when we're having tea you know as colored men so us like most cook and consist consistas of sunday marag and cake you know so for me that type of thing when we're sitting in the lounge with our girls and our boys but make it intentional we need to speak about this do you yeah. also not think that through speaking about this we will eradicate the guilt and the shame yes. that is somehow associated mm. with it and the then stigma. women will become yes. more mm. comfortable Com- in speaking about mm. this mm. in speaking about the issue that affects one in three women mm. in the western mm. cape so mm. i do i i do mm. think that you are very very right is that we should be using every platform yes. at our disposal yes. every mm. platform yeah. every gathering every chance mm. that we get mm. and if you think that that is too much if you think mm. we're speaking about it too much then i must say that um perhaps you should be doing just a little bit more mm. investigation mm. on what the impact of gender based violence is on our society as a whole mm. often we often we we only see it when when it happens like we yes. spoke mm-hmm. earlier in our family when so and so's cousin come and the sister and it happened to them and then we have this conversation mm-hmm. but also but, Caroline I also do find that we are selective in our yes. outrage mm-hmm. we are selective yes. in our outrage when it doesn't affect us directly mm-hmm. we we almost and sadly so in our community we have a matter of It's okay fa. As good you. As good you. We we are yeah. good you yeah. yeah. and yeah. family. As good you for my honest family. Uh we also have that get to the point where sadly us for lack force. Yes, so and somebody else's like, uh, yes. pain. pain yes. mm-hmm. And we need to get to that point yes. where somebody else's pain mm-hmm. is my pain. Mm-hmm. The pain yes. of my sister yes. should be, be my, my pain. pain. Again, I want to go back to the sister. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Sister. And intergenerational yes. cycles of abuse. Those children yeah. that have been subjected to DV yes. in the home, domestic yes. violence in the home. St- statistics uh-huh. are showing us they either becoming a, you know, there's a huge um chance that they're either becoming perpetrators or, or survivors, survivors themselves. Yes. So we yeah. we need to be mindful of the fact that it's just not affecting mm. the survivor mm. the w- the children need to come Cycle into this as well um yeah. and and we need to be dealing with it on that sort of level um yeah one But of I the other things caroline sorry mm. bunny one of the other things i want to speak about is men men yes. laugh together when they're together you know our 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 culture when we get gather all of us all the women will sit that side the men will be standing that side but men laugh at jokes so when your brother poses a bad joke about a woman call him mm. out i'm not in that space but you are as a man you know yes. call him out men can become 
when when they together and men gather are, that men are the biggest allies so yes. yes men yes. need to be the biggest allies for women in, women. in this fight yes. mm. and that is something that we should yeah. be speaking of mm. and we will mm. be speaking of yes. as we go in further as we delve further into more topics in the mm. series bernie i need to ask you we touched on it briefly mm. the support system mm-hmm. how important mm. is that for a survivor and for a victim absolutely important mm. um a, a, a survivor needs a support system mm. whether it's a colleague or it's a mm. friend or it's a, a church member um mm. w- what i can say is i think one of the most important things that somebody can do that is supporting a survivor is to actively listen to uh, yes. to to allow her to speak mm. for her voice to be heard mm. um and be aware of what the resources are available and also be aware of the fact that you might say i don't need any help mm. at this moment but as i said earlier go back the next day mm. say can i help you now um give her the options go at her pace it's very mm. important mm. don't say to her oh you must get out you must get out now she will know when it's going to be safer for her mm. to get out she's going to know the dynamics within her family she's going to know what's happening with her children so give her the options but actively listen and make mm. sure that you're there on every level for her mm. ladies i'm going to pose a very difficult question now um Caroline can we win this battle Yes we can mm. I'm I'm optimistic look I mean there's days where we I want to cry mm. working in the sector for so many years where I'm so despondent where I'm tired and it feels like we take 10 steps back and two steps two steps forward when you open the newspaper daily there's more femicide there's more children killed there's you know and 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 so just just to touch quickly on that gender based violence if we speak about killings it's men and women yes. you know mm-hmm. I, i want to include that but statistically more women are killed than you know than mm. than men and so by the partners remember when we speak about femicide we speak about females being murdered by men so that's why i mean if you look at femicide eight a day so i want to say mushfika it's a really a difficult question to answer benedine yeah. i'm posing it to you can we win this battle I believe we can. I believe that we will all work together and then we all use our collective resources. Mm. So if we get government departments, if we get corporations who have the money mm. that can allow us to run these programs, mm. if we get civil society organizations involved and we get the man and the woman mm. and the children involved, we can win this yeah. this fight. But we it's going to have to be a concentrated yes. effort of all of us together. Mm. I just want to latch yeah. on quickly one of the things Bernadine said so well resources mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if we are resourced to do this work you know I, i often think that the value of this work is the, the you cannot place a value on you it you cannot no? but we always hustling for resources Mm. Am I right? Yes, then, absolutely. You know, and then you hear Sarki Batman's doors might close mm. and mm. then there's another NPO that closes because we're not resourced to do this work. So I often say to people, if you cannot do this work and you want to assist, donate, mm. resource, come and volunteer. If you have bookkeeping skills, I need a bookkeeper. If you have skills that you can offer to mm. NPOs, use your skills, mm. but also use your platforms. that's how we're going to win mm, this war exactly huh? um use social media this morning i said to people tweet about the n1 city billboard you know mm. just so that raise awareness go to n1 city speak on their facebook page so it's about that you know collectively mm. doing things do what you mm. can absolutely can i ask uh, bernadine have you seen have you seen an uptick in the amount of women who are leaving have you seen has the awareness that has been created around mm-hmm. gbv mm. has it been enough I, i we've definitely seen more women mm. that are actually approaching shelters or looking for services now i understand not every woman wants to come into a shelter mm-hmm. but they might come in for counseling so, yes. or yes. they might come in to get a, a protection order mm. we're seeing an uptick in mm. those numbers absolutely mm. women are 
feeling that more comfortable mm. asking for help and I think they're also more aware of what the help is that is out mm. there and where they can find mm. it and this is why we need to carry on with these media campaigns mm. and we need to carry on with mm. the programs like this that we make sure that women know where they can go mm. to get assistance but what I want to say to the viewers out, the listeners out there is you need to ask yourself have you stood up today mm. and have you said enough is enough mm. have you taken a stand against GBV mm. have you stood there and been in support of your sister today mm. when, some, when there's been something that, is, that has happened in front of you how, no matter how big or how small mm. it is and it's when we start answering those questions and we actually start tackling it at that level mm. that we're going to see a change mm. because we need to start this at ground level mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we need to start every conversation with this at the back of our mind mm-hmm. yes. we need to start every conversation that we have with our children be be they female mm-hmm. be they male yeah. mm-hmm. um we need to start we need this to be priority right now and not only in the 60 days of mm-hmm. activism mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. um okay, okay. Oh, women's month um yes. okay, can can we just touch on that quickly yes. how important is this to be an ongoing process a 365 days mm. a year campaign mm. I often say 16 days is almost like a commercial thing mm. women's month has become commercialized mm. look we like the awareness during sure. that time and and we know that there's a lot of awareness raising and those mm. things and highlight it and that however it needs to be a 365 days campaign we're yeah. not going to win yeah. the war with 24 7 yes. 365 yeah. Thank you, ladies. This has been such an amazing opportunity to address and speak to the both of you. And I'm hoping um, that our viewers uh, have been educated, have learned something and will join us as we invite you to tune in again next week as we delve into the different types of abuse. Thank you, Bernadine. Thank you, Caroline. And in conclusion, I urge you, break the silence. Oh. Know your worth. You are not alone. There is simply no justification for GBV. Let me say that again. There is no justification for gender-based violence. Together, we can make a difference. Enough is enough. Please join us next week. Um, and don't forget, send your WhatsApps through 786 10, 11, 12.